Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. So I got this from Calvin uh, via email. He said, I'm doing career change and wanting to dive into becoming either a web dev or a UX designer with Drupal 8 training. I have absolutely zero IT and or coding background. To learn front-end dev, HTML, CSS, JavaScript responsive, do you recommend I sign up for an online boot camp, Thinkful, Springboard, Career Foundry, etc.? Or any suggestion on how to learn it fast? Now, if you've never seen any of these, Thinkful, for example, has a web development boot camp. They have a number of options, but one of the options is their kind of full-time option if you're able to like if you were just coming out of high school instead of going to college, you could do this. So you could do it full time, whatever. So that option, it costs $14,000 and you meet with a mentor daily to go to learn this stuff. And you do about 50 hours of study a week. So it would be, again, like a full time thing. And with that, you graduate in five months and they actually promise uh, that when you're done that you will get a job in web development and they have the on their site they say they have a 91 percent placement rate within the first i think it's 90 or 180 days after you graduate so that's a pretty decent offer but here's the thing about all of this i kind of have a hierarchy on how i think that you should approach this because I think we all need to be a little bit honest with ourselves. If you're new or new-ish to this and you have very little or zero IT background, you know, there's there's a it's entirely possible that you could end up hating IT. It it could end up being worse than whatever you're doing now that you want to leave. I mean, like I know that IT and technology jobs and this sort of field is the hot thing right now. And everybody and their brothers, uncles, cousins, dogs, dog park buddy are telling you that IT and technology is the future and you need to get into it or you're never going to be able to do this, that, and the other. But the truth is some people shouldn't do IT. Some people shouldn't do web development. Some people shouldn't do technology jobs. It's not for everybody. Some of you won't be good at it. Some of you will hate doing it. So keeping that in mind, and that is part of what you stated in your question. I'm sure a lot of ever, anybody else watching or listening to this that's new, this obviously applies to you. Even if you've tried it a little bit, but you haven't really done some of the things that I'm going to cover that I think you should do, you know, you should probably figure out if this is something you're going to actually like and be able to do before you drop the 14k or even worse before you drop 50 or 100,000 on a college to degree only to find out later that you actually hate this stuff and you want to do something completely different. So, my kind of hierarchy or or process for how you should do this is first, I think you should take some sort of sort of coding course. And see if you can actually make it through the coding course. I don't know how many people, the friends and family that I know have come to me and they've seen, you know, that I work from home and this, that, the other. And they're like, I want to do that. And they've come to me and said, will you teach me? And I've said yes. And they make it about three days and then they're gone because they can't stand the stuff. That's just how it is. It's not for everybody. So you should take a coding course and actually start trying to learn some of this, this stuff and see if you can actually get through it or if it's just so mind-numbing that you want to shoot yourself. If you can do that, then that's that's kind of the first step to knowing, okay, this might be something that I can do. A lot of people who end up doing this long-term take that first course and are like, oh, wow, I really love this. It's not just that this isn't horrible. I actually really enjoy this. This is really cool. And that's how you know that maybe this is something for you. The the next thing that you should do is actually try and build something. It could be anything. You can pick uh, the thing that I built first. And I mean, it was horrible. Like I wouldn't want anybody to see that code. This was 10, 11 years ago. But I built a CMS. And going through that process, I actually learned, okay, not only can I learn this stuff, because it's easy to get enamored with the learning and and learning all these cool new things, 
but now I actually have to sit down and put some time and effort into building something. So can I do that without <laughs> you know, wanting to, to run for the hills? So sit down and pick something to build, a CMS, an e-commerce site, a blog, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just pick something and sit down and see if you can actually build it start to finish and not want to die and actually be able to do it, actually be able to figure out the thing. You're going to have to figure out stuff. You're going to have to learn things up. There's going to be stuff uh, stuff that you don't know how to do. You're going you're gonna to have to go through that process, and that is a part of the continuing process. You always have to do that uh, as a web developer for the most part. So again, go through that and see if you can actually get through that. The third thing that you should do, and this is one where people really balk at and really get scared and nervous about, but again, before you go dropping a bunch of money into all of this, you should then take a client. Now, it can be a, f- a free client, a paid client, somebody you know, however you do it, however you can get somebody to, to have you build something for them. But you need to actually get that interaction of working with something, working with somebody in this particular context and see if you can deal with it because that's a whole nother part of this that a lot of people don't even think about. And it doesn't matter if you're going to freelance, or go get a job somewhere. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're going to have somebody, a client, a boss, whatever, that wants something built and you're going to have to build it for them. And that process <laughs> looks very similar, again, whether it's freelancing, working in a company, etc. Ultimately, the, the core of what you end up doing is the same. So you need to know if you can be able to do that. Some people simply are not cut out to work with other people like that, okay? And you need to know that before you, again, go dropping a bunch of money into this. So do that and see if you can deal people like that. If you do all that and you're not immediately running screaming for the hills, you actually enjoy the process, you actually enjoy doing it and you're good at it and you, 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 can, you can perform in that sense, then and only then do I think that you should consider taking a boot camp. And even then, it's only if you really feel like you need it. See, the advantage of a boot camp and and college in a different kind of sense is that you get that one-on-one mentorship. And I've talked about this. That's one of the three things that I think you need in order to learn how to code fast. You need to build real things, which was a part of this process we talked about. You need to take integrated programs of instruction instead of random tutorials and find a mentor. The value of the boot camp, what you're paying that 14k for is the one-on-one mem- mentorship. Now, you may find that as you go through the course, you don't need that as much. So then you might find investing the 14k for that isn't something that is necessary for you. You also may find that, you know what, I'm able to perform and do this, but it, I think I would really benefit from that one-on-one mentorship, get a little bit more uh, close interaction like that, and and I would really be able to up my skills a lot faster that way. You have to kind of figure that out for for you, but uh, that's the that's the, the the way that you make that decision is after you've taken a course, after you've built some things, after you've worked with a few people, and then you have a good sense of what you're really talking about and re- really doing, now you can make a an informed decision about whether or not that 14K is going to be a, a, a good investment for you. And again, it's you should only do it if you really feel like you need it, not do it just to do it. Now, after all that, I know this is one that isn't necessarily a part of the question, but I really want to get the whole picture here. After you've done all that, then, and only then, would I consider getting a college degree. And again, it's only if you feel like it will directly impact your skill set or your employment in a way that the other options can't. So you get a lot of people who say, well, you know, you get a college degree to think outside the box and learn how to to me that's all nonsense like you can learn how to do that stuff in other ways the a cs degree though can benefit certain industries or certain segments of the it industry it can help there there are things that you learn there that you will actually use doing certain things and there's certain 
segments of the industry where in order to get hired or get a job, that kind of thing is really is required. It's not just put on there to scare people away. It actually is a requirement. Or having that degree will help you get into a management position or move up or whatever. Right? There are certain places, certain pockets where that makes sense. So only if you're in one of those pockets, only if you're in one of those segments should you consider getting a CS degree, in my opinion. And Frankly, I think we're talking probably about less than 10% of developers here. I mean, I have a family member who doesn't have a CS degree and like literally just a week ago got promoted to be the director of all operate. He was the network, you know, the, the, the internet side. He was the director of that department. He's now the director of internet, phone, and TV for an ISP. No college degree. So, Again, we're talking about, I think, a very small segment of people here. I'm pulling the 10% number out of my butt. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's low in my opinion, probably a lot lower than what people think uh, because I just don't think most people are going to get 100 k worth of value out of a CS degree. I'm not saying you won't learn anything, but are you going to learn 100 k worth of stuff? I think for most people, that's probably not going to be the case. Anyway, that's how I think you should approach all this. Start with a course, get some actual experience building things and building them for people and see if you actually like this stuff before you drop 14 or 100K on a boot camp or a degree. And you might just find that the courses are good enough, that you don't need the boot camp and you can spend that 14K on hookers, I mean... You can spend it to get a new car or whatever. So now if the if if you if you hear that and that kind of makes sense to you and you want to take a kind of mini boot camp that won't cost you for 14k, then one course that you might consider is Colt Steele's web developer boot camp on Udemy. Because it's a lot like these boot camps in the sense that you're going to learn dang near everything that you need to become a well web debel- developer for just 10 bucks. And this is one of the more popular courses over there. It has 113,293 students as of this recording. It has a 4.7 star rating and according to him, a 94% job placement rate. So 94% of the people that take his course he says, and end up getting a job in web development. So why not start with something like that and see what happens, especially when right now that course is just 10 bucks. So you can, (laughs) I mean, you decide if you're in, it's johnmorrisonline.com slash bootcamp, but it might just be what you need and be a way that can save you that 14K and Even if not, it's going to teach you a ton about web development, help you get kind of started and going and see if this is something you're going to enjoy. And if you find out it's not, well, you're out 10 bucks. That's a lot better than being out 14 K. If it is something now you've only spent 10 bucks to learn all of this stuff. And now you know that you can take those steps forward. So it's a really low cost, low risk way to, to figure out and answer these questions and be able to take those steps forward again, without taking some huge 14000 or $100,000 risk that you really don't need to take. All right, so again, uh, johnmorrisonline.com slash bootcamp. That will trigger the discount link. Uh, that actually ends here in just a few days on the 22nd. So if you want in, you want to make sure and jump on that pretty quick. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And we'll talk to you next time.